Now the battle between Shinra and Rank uh, actually begins, but we actually saw the backflash of Tamaki look up to Rinka and the other lieutenants, which they actually show how incredible they are, which we saw the battle between the two third generation fire soldiers, even though their powers are outmatch each other, Rinka actually using his Starfist jab on Shira, in which he actually have using everything he can to defeat Shinra, in which the the infernal bug that inside of the jar reacted to Shinra's fire, and that is when he had revealed his reason for turning people, including children, into infernals, which actually meant. That he and also the Evangelists have actually been looking for the Adola Burst, which is actually the powerful fire that he's been looking for, which is described as a pure, undulterated flame. Even though Shimon doesn't know what the Adola Burst is, he actually going to face. Rinka, because he is responsible for creating artificial infernals. So he actually using everything he has, but no matter what he do, I mean what he did, Rinka outbested Shinra, which he actually bumped into Tamaki, and then the flame actually has set up some funny moments throughout the episode. So. Despite the moments, we actually saw Rinka actually get ready to overheat, which he's going to use his fire fist to defeat Shinra. But however, during that, he actually say that if he keep on doing it, he's going to blow himself and everyone with him. And that's a risk that he's going to take. But then Kron actually came. I mean, Krim actually came and cool him off and in case of an ice, which he and Lee actually came, which he knew that he was responsible. But all of a sudden, Kira was actually was shot, even though within the ice. And that is when we knew someone actually took him out. That is when the people wearing the white clothes are actually responsible for taking out Rinka after he actually was about to reveal to Shinra that he's going to turn Earth into another sun and which that being said their goals now actually been revealed and so we actually seen Shinra using smoke screen to Confuse the enemy, and while Tamaki using her fire tail and Krim using his ice to show off their location, the enemy have actually retreated. In which Krim actually gave him the cloak to Tamaki, and which even though she was responsible, she needs to be prepared for what punishment that she actually will accept. In which we actually seen Shira looking at the deceased body of Kira. We saw Krum actually saw that he is who he is, but at the but at the end he's still his friend. In which he actually thanked him for that. And after the credits, we actually seen Shira return to Company Eight, and he actually working like. A normal day is actually happening, even though Arthur is not actually around. And he actually look at everyone and what they actually been doing, and he's going to enjoy himself. But then he actually saw Tamaki inside the office, which Obi actually revealed that Tamaki has been suspended of Company One's activity, and which during that suspension she's actually been placed into Company Eight. So she actually is a member there, 
And that being said, we actually knew where Arthur actually is, which he actually sh is shown in a desert wearing a cloth. Now, Rinko's actually ha have revealed a goal which the people were wearing the white cloaks, and that actually meant the adoral burst, which the pure flame that he'd been looking for, and that was the reason why he actually did that. And after the aftermath, Tamaki ended up being suspended from Company 1 and joined Company 8 during that time. So, all in all, it's kind of a bittersweet victory. But we're actually going to find out what's going to happen on the next episode next weekend. So anyway, like this video, subscribe for more, and comment on what you think about the episode. You guys can also follow me on Twitter, Instagram, and Tumblr, and like my Facebook page. Until then, this is Amy Guy Jordan here saying sign out. Laters.